Welcome to Crafty Hints. I'm Chantel. I'm excited that you've joined me today. And I've got 21 DIYs from 2021 that I thought you might enjoy. It was hard to narrow it down, but let's take a look. For this first one, I took a sign from the Dollar Tree and I've just flipped it over and I'm using some Waverly chalk paint. I believe this is a color steel. And now what I wanna do is I wanna make this sign and I'm going to put gather, but you could definitely use the poster stickers as I showed there from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just applying this stencil decal. I use stencil vinyl and my Cricut to make it. But again, you could get stickers from wherever you like to get them, Hobby Lobby Michaels, online. Next, I'm going to take this, I think this was ivory, and I'm just going to pounce that on top. This will ensure that I don't get any bleeding underneath. And this is just called reverse stenciling. And I like it better than stenciling. I think it's kind of neat. I do need to try a little bit more stenciling, but I think this is so fun. After I do that, I go over it with my brush and I put a good coat of that ivory, which of course you don't want to sit and watch me paint this whole sign. After that was just about 95% dry, I start to peel this off and it peels off pretty easily. I like that little tool from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a two pack and Gosh, isn't that kind of satisfying as that peels off and you don't see any bleeds? I love it, but I do like this sense of vinyl. And that's why I did show you that I'll link that below in case it's something that you'd like to use. I used to print my fonts in reverse from Word and then cut mine out with an X-Acto knife before I even got a Cricut. So just an idea. But look at that. Okay, I bought this trim from the Home Depot and I'm just going to put this at the angle. I'm just measuring that. And you go all the way to the corner. And I did use a miter saw, but I also have a miter box that I've used. And I watered down some ink paint with water and I'm just brushing that on. I wanted a dark stain and I'm wiping that off with a rag. Does that make a nice stain? Okay, now I'm going to take some wood glue and I'm just putting that on the corners here where I need them to attach. And then I'm just going to put a clamp on there. They do have clamps at the Dollar Tree. I got this for a whole pack of them, big, small, medium, um, at Walmart, I think for like five bucks. So I let that sit until it was completely dry. I took my sanding block over my sign and see, it's a scarecrow sign. Flipped that over here and I'm just going to line it up. And then you can take some of the craft paper and just cover the back of this and put on your hanger or whatever you'd like to hang it with. I did just set this one on the back of my coffee bar buffet. Look at that. That's for under $2 really. Maybe $2.50 if I include vinyl and everything, but I think you'll like that. Let me know below what you think. Start out, I used this little wooden crate and just gave it a coat all over of Waverly's chalk paint in ivory. You just want to cover it all. You don't really need to do the inside of it. And then in between, I wanted you to be able to see that it, it is like books. So I used mineral in between there. You could use any sort of shading color there. Basically, you're just trying to give the illusion that this is a stack of books. So I did that on the front and the back. Then I used my Cricut and I did Be Humble and Kind. 
Now you could definitely write this if you wanted to and you could use tracing paper. You could also trace it a little bit harder with like a pen and it leaves a little bit of an imprint and go back over it with a Sharpie. Next, I used some ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. I like this ribbon. That black and white I think is just is fun together. So just give it a couple dabs of glue here to secure it to the crate slash books. And cut that off and glue it down. Next, since we have a bee theme, I wanted to add a little bit of yellow ribbon. So I just did the exact same thing and glued this around right on top of the black ribbon. And then I just want a bow to kind of tie this together. So just make your favorite bow that you think will fit. A, a shoestring bow would be just fine. And I just tacked these down to the crate. Books. <laughs> All right, see how simple this is? And it will be such a nice decor piece. I cut the ends of my ribbon at an angle. Just snipped that. I should have snipped it before I glued it down, but I was thinking I was going to leave them straight across, but they needed a little something. And just a dab of glue. And to finish this off, I used my Artisto markers, and they're just an acrylic paint, and I filled in my B. And that's all there is to it. What do you think? Okay, I know you're wondering, what is she doing now? Well, I took my glue gun into this glass dish. They come in a set of two or three from the Dollar Tree. And I put some hot glue in there. And this is my coffee mug warmer that I put it on there to keep the glue warm. And then I added some yellow eyeshadow. Now I'm probably not going to use yellow so it wasn't a great loss. So I just keep adding it until it looks like honey of course. So just keep mixing that up and adding a little glue until it looks just about right. So I have these little honey daubers, or what are they called, dippers? Yes, honey dippers, that's what we'll call them. So I'm going to add my faux honey around them on my silicone mat. If you don't have a silicone mat, I do think it's a neat investment because your hot glue peels right off and so does your um, paint you can just rub it right off. I use like a shower scrubby and I just rub that off. I have one just for my silicone mat, so easy. So I put that on there and then I added some of my little honeybees. I actually just added a little bit of the faux honey on the back of it. And now we'll do another one. I mixed up another batch and this one I'm gonna lay on its side. And as you put it on there, I found once you get it looking pretty good, you got most of the honey out. If you just keep twisting it in a circle, kind of like you do with real honey, it makes it look more realistic. And this is sticky. Well, it's glue, but you know, it kind of acts like honey. So it was just kind of fun, but do be careful because it is hot and hot glue burns so be very careful there you might even want to put some finger protectors on so i just held my little wood um goodness i can't talk all of a sudden i just my little coffee stirrer is actually what this one is and i just held it against it as i turned it and it just gets in all of those little grooves 
and you know you can manipulate the glue just a little bit better and I just scrape out every little bit of each batch And those little hair things aren't going to be a big deal because when they're on the silicone mat, I can kind of twist them off a little bit. But I'll also just use my heat gun. Now, I did this one the same way, twisting it more and more, but I added more blobs off to the side as if I spilled some honey and added a few more bees to this one. So the one standing straight up has one bee, the other one doesn't have any. And this one has four or five on there. So kind of cute. I think I did five. I think I like odd numbers. So yes, there is B number five. How cute are these? And here it is. It dries pretty quickly. So as you can see, it has these little bits hanging off that I'm not real fond of. And this one's dry, same thing. So just took my heat gun and as you can see, it just curls right up and makes it look much better in a nice finished, gosh, how much would you pay for these if you bought them? Now I remembered that my other little silicone pot holder had little like honeycombs on it. So I used some of my leftover and put that on there and does that not look like a little honeycomb kind of fun so i added a few little bees to that as well and here we are i hope you like it oh i just love this theme I use these two Easter eggs. Well, I was trying to decide between the two, I should say. And this one's a jumbo. It is huge in comparison to that other one. So I added a little bit of glue here and I'll use some of the nautical rope and I'm just going to spin it around the outside. So just adding a dab of glue here and there we're gonna make a little mini honeycomb. Gosh, won't that go cute with the other ones? So just continue to add a little bit and you just continue feeding that all the way up. And so now we have the bottom and I am so sorry, I must have snipped that footage. All I did was go up to the top and then made a loop. So here on the bottom, I'm just going to put some glue and I want this to sit flat because, of course, an egg is rounded. So I used a cap off of a bottle. And that worked well. It may have even been a milk cap. I'm trying to remember, but it worked well. Use what will fit on yours. I also made a larger one of these this last year. And I used um, a planter, like a plant planter. You could definitely do that. It was adorable, but this one I decided to show you this time on a smaller scale. So around the bottom, I used a nautical rope and then I just used some other regular rope that I just had from Walmart for the rest of the beehive. So the nautical rope was just a little bit darker around the bottom. I thought it gave it a nice finished edge. And so once you get that around the cap, we'll just snip that off. Make sure you do when you're working with the rope that you have some good scissors because I didn't quite. Those aren't great. So make sure you've got some good scissors that are maybe just for your rope. All right. Now this was inside one of my little planters. It's just a center, but I wanted a little circle. On the bigger one I was telling you about, I just used a black piece of tape or vinyl and made that for my little beehive door. 
So now I'll just put a little bit of rope around the outside and that about finishes it up. You'll have to let me know which of these bee themes was your favorite. I think mine is a little honey daubers. And I grabbed those bees off of Amazon. I don't remember if I told you that earlier. So I can throw that in the description box below. I'm not going to include all of the supplies, but I'll definitely put some of the key items that I didn't maybe grab from the Dollar Tree. I try to make most of the items just something you can grab from Walmart or a hobby store. start off I took this wood bead and just clipped it right in that hole and snipped it and it just took it right in half. Next I took this oval from the Dollar Tree and just used wood glue to attach it. Now I'm just using some Apple Barrel multi-surface paint. I then took my Cricut and cut out Squeeze Me. I thought it was kind of a cute one. You could definitely use stickers or a paint pen. Just make this yours, but it's a really cute, quick made, make a lemon sign. And it's just really that simple. I will link this so that you could even Mod Podge this or trace it with some tracing paper and use a paint pen like this. I For this, I just took a wood circle that I had from Walmart and cut it in half with an X-Acto knife. And then in my Cricut design space, they had um, a lemon. And so I just cut that in half and put it together. That's from the Dollar General. Um, they do have some at the Dollar Tree. They're a little bit different size, but you could definitely use that. And then I got that paper from Joann's and I'm using my Elmer's Extra Strength Crafters Glue and I just put that on. I love the nice firm hold. Using my heat gun to take off that label. Still left a little glue so just sand that off a bit. Now my favorite way to trim off this paper is just to use an emery board and it gives it such a nice, perfect finish around the edge. So much closer than cutting with scissors. Now I'm just poking that the circles back in so I can put my screws and the lid on. And doesn't this just look like a nice jug of lemonade? I thought, how cute. And so then I'll add my lemons to this with a little bit of jute twine. Super simple decor there, right? So many fun lemon things that you can do. And I did several last year. Again, I had to dwindle this down to 21. So if you do want more, there are more on my channel. Pretty simple. And here we are. I did do a whole tiered tray with the lemons as well. Okay, I took this box from the Dollar Tree and now I'm just tr gonna kind of stain these tumbling tower blocks. First I tried one stain and now I just have this mineral paint watered down and I made that kind of as a natural stain that would match that wood box. Now I'll glue those together to make a stack of them. So just a little bit of wood glue. 
you wouldn't want to use hot glue just because it doesn't give you a nice flat adherence and this will bond the glue together really well. So just stack those and glue them all together and then I just put the clamp on them to hold them nice and tight until they dried. Now I took my drill and just got a little hole there that will fit my Sharpie. Have you guessed what we're making yet? Okay, so a little more wood glue and I'm going to attach these blocks right inside this box, right up next to the edge. Now, how many times have you been to a family gathering and you go to find your cup and you just can't? Well, here we go. We've got a cup holder. Pop that pen in there. And now I did make this on my Cricut, but you, it's really close to some of the letters that you can find at the Dollar Tree. If you do decide to use the Dollar Tree letters, I would put a little bit of decoupage over the top of them just to make sure that they do stay on there. But I just put mark your cup and drink up. So it's just a simple little thing um, to set out your cups. And I did also use one of those little party favor buckets to hold my straws. Oh yeah, have you not given me a thumbs up yet? You should do that real quick. You've liked a couple of these by now, right? Don't forget to hit that bell. I think that you'll enjoy my channel and that I'll let you know when I release new videos. Okay, I took this bucket and I put some jute twine right underneath the edge of that handle. This bucket came from the Dollar Tree, but I've seen them at several places. And I just want this one line all the way around. And then I just took a lighter and went across the twine just to get all of the fuzzies off because I wanted to paint it. I took this out and just spray painted it real quick. And then I designed this bee and the leaves and everything um, in Photoshop. So that was my design. And now instead of using my Cricut this time, I'm going to use this transfer. And I'm just going to trace it all out. So just going right around the edges. If you had a favorite sticker or something like that that you wanted to use, you could do that. But I'm going to show you, you could probably go over the sticker with what I'm going to do. Um, but just give me a moment to show you. Or if you're great at freehand, whew, more power to you. Okay. I'm going to use this fabric glue to give this a little bit of a 3D effect. So I'm going over my little bit of stencil here. And I kind of wanted this just to be an old bucket where, you know, maybe this was punched out. I, I thought it was something fun. It was something different. It goes along with that bee theme that I was doing last summer. So just continue to fill all of that in until you're happy with it. If you need to do a second coat, go right ahead. And I just took a, some of that out because now I'm going to paint over the top of it after it fully dried. So I went back over this with gray. Well, I think this was mineral. And it's, you know, a watered down mineral. 
And now I'm going back over this with a little bit of ivory because I wanted those edges to kind of pop out. And I apologize. I was shooting and there was sunlight coming in and who did that keep changing? I apologize for that. So I went back over this whole thing now with ivory. I wanted just a nice base coat. But as you can see, you know, I wanted a little bit of that gray sneaking out like this is, you know, just kind of aged. Maybe it's been repainted. And you can go back over and, you know, just add your touch ups. And I went back over with just a few touches of a uh, acrylic marker. And again, you're just kind of doing this until it makes you happy. If you were happy with it being all ivory, perfect. But I wanted a little bit of that gray. And so I kept messing with it till it made me happy. All right, looks like I'm just about done with that gray. Now I'm going to wrap these handles in a little bit of jute twine just to kind of finish that up a little bit. Give it a little bit of that farmhouse feel. And there we are. All right, and back in with a little bit of that watered down ivory. And just a few little touch ups. I think that it did turn out cute. That made me happy. And here's my plant. was a fun kind of trash to treasure thrift flip I had this old wood tray and I used a little bit of gosh I think that was that was either mineral or steel I'm not positive and this is a bit of ivory I just wanted to give this a facelift give it a little bit of a farmhouse feel so now I'm just marking off the center and I'm putting grateful in the middle. I'm going to do some reverse stenciling on this also. This was kind of the inspiration for the other sign because I did have this sitting on that buffet. Um, I have the tray sitting there and I thought the gather would just be pretty with it. So after I put that on there, I'm going to take this and just kind of give it a pouncing motion you can use a dauber you can use a sponge brush but it works well for me every time i think this is the only stencil vinyl i will probably ever purchase again because i just get no bleeding from it all right so i'm just going to paint this up and of course i won't make you watch the whole thing i don't know if you've noticed but i try to have all of my DIYs in five minutes or under. Out of all of them, this may be the longest one I think I have on here, but I try to keep them five minutes or under. I know that your time's valuable, so on my channel, I speed things up where, you know, you know how to paint, and I'm showing you here how to distress with a dry brush. So that's a little bit of a different technique. So I wanna show you just a little bit more how I go and what my motion is. It's still sped up, but you're getting the idea of it. If you're someone that really wants, you know, a couple of my videos just slowed down and in the regular speed, I can do that too. I would be happy to do a faster version and a slower version. So if that's something that you'd really like, I would be happy to consider that. Just put that down in the comments. 
This channel is about helping you get ideas and inspire you. So, of course, you don't need to do it exactly the way I do, but um, hopefully this inspires you. I'm just using my sanding block now, roughing it up a little bit. I will go across the edges just to distress it a little bit as well. Now I have some nautical rope that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to run that around the handles. So this is simply attaching that and I bet you have an easier way of doing this because at first it was a bit of a challenge. Um, I took just about that whole pack back through the handle. So basically you're just going to sit and wrap this until it's all the way around the handle and we'll do that on both sides. And I won't have you watch the whole thing, of course. I will show you a couple of steps so that you get the gist of it. And then we'll move on. And here we are on this handle, just tacking down each of the ends so that you make sure it's not really seen. And I apologize, my lighting wasn't quite as good last year. Here we are, isn't that pretty? Oh, I really like this tray, it makes me smile. To start out, you'll want two of these from the Dollar Tree. I tore off the flower that was there and then just scraped off the remnants. Now I'm taking off the back and the hanger. Next, you just want to pull the prongs out of one frame and leave them on the bottom frame. And then you just want to match them up. And now we're going to add the beads. I take my Gorilla Glue and some hot glue and I'm putting them a pinky space apart. I got these beads off Amazon. I think it's like 1300, it's a thousand beads, 1300 beads for like $12. Again, I can link that below. I took that out and spray painted it. I thought that would be the easiest way to get all the way around those beads and get a nice covering. Now I took that Elmer's Professional Extra Strength Craft Glue and I just put a piece of cardstock there so that when I put this tissue paper on top of it, it will cover nicely. The other paper would not come off very well and I wanted a nice clean edge on the other side. So this was the easiest way to do that. And there we are, we've got that all on there. And now I'm just going to Mod Podge the top as well. That way if anything you know is on here, it's not gonna mark it up or tear up the tissue paper as easily. Now I just took my emery board and away we go. A little bit of mineral. I'm going to just distress this a little bit. You could leave it if that fits your decor just a little bit better. I liked the way this looked. So just getting in some of those nooks and crannies so it looks like maybe the paint is chipped here or there. This tray has been around the farm, I tell ya or passed down from family to family. And I just touched up where I needed to, and now I wanna put some feet on here. So I'm just painting some beads and a little bit of hot glue and attaching those to the bottom. As you can see, our bottom is in there. Everything is just looking nice. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, I love this. I started with these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree in a couple of different sizes, and I'd use them in other things. As you can see, I painted some of them uh, 
lighter color. And now I'm just taking the end of a paintbrush and pushing that styrofoam through. So again, I got all of these from the Dollar Tree. These, are, This one is the more styrofoam one. And now I'm just taking that yarn needle and I just tie that off. I think I probably wouldn't have moved this closer to the center. It makes it harder to get all that yarn in there because what we're going to be doing and why I used the needle was it was so much easier that way to just get this to go all the way around this pumpkin. These are one of my favorites this year. So I did these pumpkins in a couple different colors. Some of them I put the original stems in, some I just used a twig, but then you just take some scissors or a paintbrush or whatever and just, you know, feed that back down in there. But I think this technique could be used for a couple of different things, but I think for the pumpkins, it's adorable. So I did that in cream, I did it in that sage, and now I'm doing it in this wonderful blue. That one has a stick in it. Oh, aren't those pretty? So simple yet so pretty. For this project, I took one of these cubes from the Dollar Tree. It has the little drawer, so there's two pieces there, and one of the little trays from the Dollar Tree. They're all wood, and I gave those a nice coat with the Waverly White chalk paint. Next, I'm taking some Mod Podge and going over the front of this. I think I could have used just a little bit less and it would have given me a smoother finish. Again, love this tissue paper. All right, and we're just going to go all the way around the outside of the tray. And once it was completely dry, I took a little fan brush so it'd have a little bit less Mod Podge and went over the top of it. Once that was completely dry, I took this file and just went in a downward motion. That seemed to work the best. Oh, had to get that sticker off. And just continue that way to get all of that excess tissue paper off. It's the easiest way so you don't have to cut exactly and you don't have any little funny edges. So you just take it all the way around. Next, I took this, oh goodness, which green was it from Waverly? It's uh, one of the darker greens from Waverly. And I decided to go over the edge of the two little cubes and the top of the tray. Just to give it a more finished look. Next, I'm going to glue those two cubes together. Now remember, this is a drawer, so one smaller than the other. And I didn't need to fully paint those areas because wood glue adheres better to just wood with nothing else on it. Gave it a little bit of hot glue for that instant hold. And I apologize, my hot glue is a little bit dark. Um, I might have left that on all night. So the glue might have gotten a little bit dark and I squeezed out a bunch of it but this gave it a nice good hold. It didn't have an issue there. I see now that the top of my box needed a little bit of paint because I was thinking it would be covered. And so just do a little bit of touch up paint here and add a little bit of hot glue here and take some ribbon along this edge. We're just giving it a nice finished look. And I went all the way around the edge of the tray. And I think this would be good enough, but I've decided to put some feet on the bottom. So I took a skewer and I just took some low temp hot glue and I put it at the end so that they wouldn't roll off. Now I'm just going to paint these beads real quick with some Waverly chalk paint and then set them aside to dry. Next, I took this beaded ribbon 
from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to go around the top of those cubes. I just thought, gosh, it's missing something and this would give it a little bit of texture. So I'm just taking that around the cubes, giving a little bit of hot glue. And my hot glue is starting to get clear again. So that's a good thing, especially with these little beads. And then I realized that the taller cube would have a couple rows less than the smaller. So I just cut a few rows of this after I measured once around because it needed one more row of these beads. So I just went around those three edges and that was perfect. It was as easy as that to give it a nice finished look. You do want to look at the Dollar Tree when you go now and then. They have some neat different tissue papers or, you know, party supply stores. But, you know, you get one to fit your decor or for that special someone you want to make a gift for. This would be good for Father's Day also. They have like a more um, plaid one and some, you know, different prints that might suit other people just a little bit better. All right, I think we have all of those. And these are my paint pens. I took this pizza pan and this placemat and I just traced it on the back there and made a nice mark. So now I just cut that out and it fits just about in there. I have a tiny gap at the top, but that's okay. That's where my bow will go. I have these half beads that I grabbed off of Amazon. I believe you can also find them at Hobby Lobby, probably at Michael's, but I'm just gluing those on. And now I'm coming in with ivory or plaster. Those are the two I like to go to. I rarely use bright white, um, unless I'm going underneath my tissue paper or something like that. So first off, I just want to get in between the beads and then I'm just going around those and making sure those beads get a bit of once over. And I went over them, I think with a little bit of mineral as well, just to distress them a tiny bit. Now I'm gluing down that placemat. Again, got the placemat at the Dollar Tree. And now I have this nice light nautical rope that you see sitting there. That'll go around the edge and just give it a little bit more of a finished look. That lighter nautical rope is so pretty and it's soft. So, which was a little bit surprising that the rope was so soft, but it was. Now I've got this lamb's ear that I got from Walmart. And I like the lamb's ear because you can just pull it right off of the stem. You don't really have to trim it down. Now I'm making a loop. And to find my center, I just take this wired ribbon and kind of pull it to the opposite end. That gives me the perfect center. I'm just going to pinch those in the middle. And I will make a few more. So however many loops you want, that's how you're going to do it. This is just one other way that I make a bow that I wanted to show you. Super simple. Pinch it and then back to the middle. And now that one's just a little bit smaller than the other and the next one will be just a little bit smaller. But just makes a nice staggered bow and now I just want a little middle to my bow. Now to put those together, as you can see, I have a little clear zip strip and I do want some tails so I'm just gonna Fold that over and have a tail there. 
So gather everything together. And now I'm gonna slide my zip strip through the center, bring it around to the back, and give it a zip. I didn't go all the way until I was happy and straightened out my bow. Then you gave it a nice tight pull and clipped it. And put a little bit of lamb's ear there, put my bow, little bit of that, those uh, pit berries, put a little bit of twine on the back just to make a hanger. Just a little loop, super simple. And just a little bit of primping and the final touches for this pretty sign. Just some nice, soft, subtle colors. Now I'm taking these tumbling tower blocks and just using a little bit of a brush for some glue. And it's just some wood glue and I'm gluing those just end to end. And now I'm doing side to side. And sometimes you can find the tumbling tower blocks in two different shades. And I thought that would make a cute little tray. And actually these last couple videos were from a challenge video um, with a couple of friends. I do a video called She Did What? And we each choose a couple of challenge items that you have to use. And so one of the challenge items here were the tumbling tower blocks. Um, it was also a pizza pan. And then the other item was tissue paper. So that's what these last couple videos were kind of fun. And I thought, gosh, I wonder if I can't make a tray out of these. So here we are. I think it's kind of fun and turns out cute. And I'm just going back over this with some wood glue, filling in some of those gaps because the blocks aren't perfect. And then I sanded that off and now I'm just using a little bit of this jute ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And that just gives it a nice finished edge. Now I'm taking a couple different size beads out of that big bead set. I have a couple of them I had stained in the past and had some extras so I have one stain, or the smaller ones are a little bit stained, and then the bigger ones are not. Just gluing those together to make some little legs for my tray. All right, just gluing those in the corner so that stain will look a little bit better next to that wood. It's kind of hidden by the ribbon though. How adorable is this? Oh my goodness. Ah, fresh cup of lemonade, a little muffin. Perfect. I got this little sign at the Dollar Tree and just took it apart. It is adorable on its own, but I need it a little bit different. Here's one time I do use the Waverly White Chalk Paint. And now what I'm doing is I'm going over this frame, but if you see, I'm continuing to go over it after it starts to dry. And with chalk paint, if you go back over it as it dries, it makes it look a little bit distressed. See how it's kind of bumpy? It looks like this frame has been around for a while. And now what I did was I took this tissue paper, I attached it to a piece of cardstock or paper. I ran it through my printer and then just printed Simply Blessed. What a nice way to make your own personal sign. You could print anything on there. Now I'm just trimming that off but it'll be on there and I'll be good to go. I'll have that beautiful backing. So I'm gonna glue that down. 
Again, my favorite glue stick. And I do like that glue stick to use sometimes better than Mod Podge because I don't have that streaking. It just lays right down. And as you can see, even with the tissue paper, it lets me pull it back up and get it nice and straight. All right, let's pop this back into the frame. I think this would have been pretty just as it was. I ended up later taking this back off because I like the simplicity of it, but I did add some greenery and a little bit of ribbon here. You can definitely let me know below if you would have included this or just left it pretty as it was, but I added this and I added a little bow. But later I kind of looked at it and I went back and I took it back off. I was like, mm, the simplicity of it was just so pretty. Oh my goodness, when I found this tray, I had to grab several. This was just over in the party supply area. And I knew that I wanted to make a pedestal for this. So I used my half round beads and I'm just going to put those all the way around. I think these are beautiful all by themselves but I could just see it, you know, with this little bit of embellishment and oh, I just, I, I couldn't wait to use this one. And I have several of them. I really do love them. All right. Now, I didn't want to put paint where there might be food. I'm using ivory here. Another good choice would probably be plaster. Um, you could use white also, but I thought the white might look funny. With the other white, it wouldn't quite match up. So I painted just to the edge. I believe I was out of plaster, so I did go with the ivory. The nice thing about the chalk paint is you really only need one layer most times. It goes on plastic, it goes on glass, it goes on metal. It is such a versatile paint. I really love Waverly's chalk paint. All right, just getting in all of those nooks and crannies. I just wanted to give this a nice country feel. And I did the same with the pedestal. That's just a candle holder from the Dollar Tree. Gave it some Gorilla Glue. E6000 would work just as well. I found the Gorilla Glue doesn't have as strong of an odor and holds super tight. Now I'm just gonna put that in the middle. That hot glue will give me that quick hold and the Gorilla Glue will then give me that permanent hold. And now I added this lemon plate that I found at the Dollar Tree. Oh, how pretty is that? Isn't that pretty? I love this. I found this window mirror at the Goodwill and was like, score, love it. I know I can redo that, and make it better. So, and I apologize, nice angle of my camera. I did take out the mirror and now I'm just going over this with some plaster chalk paint. And just getting in there, I don't have to have absolute full coverage. And now I'm distressing it with a wet paper towel method. 
So what that consists of, this wasn't real wood. It was like a plastic. So if I take a wet paper towel or a rag and kind of go in spots, it's going to lift a little bit of that paint off and give it a distressed look. Kind of like, you know, this window just came down. It had been repainted several times. Yes, I make up stories to go along with my items. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see, and I really loved this effect. I didn't need to dry brush it or anything. Now I thought it needed a little bit a little wreath. So I took that smaller reed wreath and or willow wreath from the Dollar Tree. And then I had this peony. I think that one might have been from Michael's. And now I'm just going to fit this around. And this I will speed up. Um, these little wreaths aren't, you know, something that you need a super step by step. I wrapped it around. I gave it a little bit of hot glue. I glued the um, peonies, peonies. I've heard it both ways. Um, leaves back in there. And then I pulled off some lamb's ear. And I will just attach these here and there. I love the softness of the lamb's ear. It's such a nice soft color. It has a little fuzz to it. It's just so pretty and such a nice soft effect. Now to hang this on my window, I was trying to think, you know, I don't know if that plastic would take a nail. So what I ended up doing was grabbing one of those removable hooks that the Dollar Tree sells, kind of like the 3M ones, where you can pull the tag down and remove it, just in case I didn't like it. Um, but I put one of those up, and that's what I will hang this wreath off of. So you've seen many videos at this point. Have you picked a favorite? Have you taken a minute to subscribe? I would really love to have you as part of my friends and family. And if you're still watching at this point, throw a flower next to your comment. I would love to see if you're watching this video. I decided against adding ribbon. As you can see, I was trying to decide, did it need a bow? What did it need? But yes, I will add my hook right there. Yes, the thumbs up. And this is beautiful and it's hanging in my bathroom. That was just on my wall in my craft room, but it's now in my bathroom and I make a new wreath for every season to go on there. Let me know, would you throw the mirror back on there? Here's the before and after. Okay, I got this vase um, when I had surgery at one point and it obviously doesn't fit my decor. So I started out with just a base coat of ivory and I will not make you watch me paint the whole thing, of course. Then, or maybe I went with plaster and then I went back in with ivory, but I'm doing that same technique where as it starts to dry, I went back in and added some brush strokes. Now I'm doing a little splatter effect. It does work better with a paintbrush I, or with a toothbrush, I believe. I tried doing it with this paintbrush and it wasn't quite as good of an effect, I don't think. But I'm just giving that a few flecks here and there. And then look at these cherry blossoms. I found those at the Dollar Tree. They are so long and they're beautiful. But remember, if you're using faux flowers or florals, bend them up a bit. Your flowers don't grow perfectly straight. And oh, there's a view out my townhouse. Snow is starting to melt as it's becoming spring. But fold those around and just give it a more lively effect to your cherry blossoms. 
It just makes them look so much more pretty. All right, so here they are all placed. I think that turned out pretty and what a makeover for that vase. These were my two thrift flips that I thought I should include in here as just an idea and inspiration. I started out with some Waverly chalk paint and I just went over that whole vase. Now I took this hula skirt and they're just on here with like a slip knot. So I just undid a bunch of those and I poured some leftover coffee in this cup and I just put it down in there and I let it soak for just a little bit. Then I took it out and squeezed it out and it gave it a nice tint. I have used these hula skirts for so much so grab the adult length and they are so versatile. All right, again, giving this a bit of texture. You wouldn't guess that it was just an old vase, glass vase. Now I'm just gluing some of these end to end so that I can start just wrapping this all the way around this vase. And I'm just going to cover it around... I think I did about a fourth to a third of the vase and just a couple dabs of glue. And there we are. Now I'm just tying some around the top. I'm sorry, this angle isn't the greatest for that, but I just tied a knot as you can see. Now I'm going to gather them together and grab some of these beads and giving this a little bit of a boho theme. So the next several projects just have kind of a boho feel. I tied a little slip knot and then just fed through a couple strands there. How pretty. Okay. This was, again, another one of those challenge of she did what. And so the challenge item on here was, I believe, a mirror and the cake pan. And so I gave those all a coat in ivory. Now I'm going to glue this on the back side of my cake pan. And I have paper over that so you don't see my ceiling fan going and my camera. And, you know, I had given those tumbling tower blocks just a coat. And now I'm just going to glue those all the way around the outside. Now, I could see where you might embellish this with even some nautical rope, maybe the white nautical rope. And it could look kind of like a porthole mirror. That could be pretty if you have that for maybe like a summer theme. That could be really pretty. But I thought this had a little bit of a boho feel. You could take some of that hula skirt, wrap it around it if you wanted to, add a few beads. I did not do that. I left it just like this. And I did think that that was pretty. There's the mirror. All right, one more. I took this coffee can. I wrapped that around there so that I knew how many popsicle sticks I'll need to go around it. So that's just how I measured it. Lined them all up. And now what I'm going to do is make sure they're all straight and I took more of that hula skirt and I'm going to hot glue this across it with enough of a tail that I can tie it. So this just was a nice way, instead of gluing every popsicle stick to the can, 
This way I can just attach them and tie them on. They can have a little bit of movement, but not too much. I thought it was kind of a fun idea. So I did that at the top and then I did it again at the bottom just to give it some good stability. And now just a dab of glue and we'll just roll this right around the can. And tie that nice and tight and it'll go right underneath there so you won't even see that it was tied. Once it's tied and clipped off, yes, you won't see it a bit. All right, now I did make those just a little bit longer than the can. I didn't want you to be able to see that it was a can, so I used some tumbling tower blocks and some little square blocks from the Dollar Tree. That gives me a little stand at the bottom of this. And now I'm going to do the same beads that I did around the vase. So what to do, again, you just pull those together and you feed a couple beads on there. And then I'll show you how I attached the extra, I guess it's kind of like raffia, but I made a loop right here. And then fed the extra through there so that I have a little bit more tassel. I think I did make this one before I made the other before, but there we go. How adorable is that? I even made a little garland there. All right, well, thank you so very much for watching. I do appreciate each and every one of you and want to thank you. Here's a couple videos that you might enjoy.